Hello and welcome everyone. I am Skrillex, your local Switch Ox player, and today I'm going to be going over this Rudin or Gigante fight that I did a couple days ago. In this video, I will discuss how to fight Nur Gigante with the Switch Ox, utilizing all of its tools and playing as safely and as optimally as possible. Take note that the most optimal way to fight a Nurki is not always going to be the fastest way, and this is just going to be giving you an idea of how you should be playing the Switch Axe. I'm going to be playing the entire run, and then I will be pausing and rewinding at the end of the video to give you my thought process and, my, and a rerun of the video with my commentary.
And as you can see, we ended up killing Nergigante in just under 5 minutes, coming in at a solid 442 time. This is a very solid time that I don't expect any newer Switch Axe player to actually achieve. However, this is the most optimal way, the fastest way, and this is the fastest way to optimally and safely play against a Ner Nergigante. Now, I imagine most newer players will probably get around 10 or 12 minutes, maybe just under 10 minutes, or even 20 minutes. It doesn't matter. This is a game, play how you would like to, and just keep in no keep in mind that this is a speed this is a speed run technically. I am a speedrunner and I know my weapon better than a lot of other people do. However, that is why I'm here and I will go over this entire run with you to give you some thought process on to how what I look for when I go into this fight. So we're going to speed this up. We're going to note that I'm going to be just doing all the casual, eating my de mega demon drug, demon powder and my mice at the beginning. I advise using Rock City and Temporal Mantle for this fight, and I opt for an Evasion Mantle instead of a Temporal Mantle because I'm very comfortable fighting their Gigante, and I want the extra damage. Before we start the fight here, there's one thing I want to point out, that Ruiner Nergigante has these black spikes going all over his body. Sometimes they'll be orange, sometimes they'll be black. When you break these spikes off, you force a trip on Nergigante. Sometimes you'll get just to get a flinch or a clagger. You're going to want to aim for these black spikes in order to create large openings against Ruiner Nergigante when he's down. In this case, the wing is going to be very hard to hit, so you can't really go for it. This arm does not have any, and his head does not have any either. However, Ruiner's le uh, right arm will always have some orange spikes on it, and these spikes have 600 total HP before you break them off, which would cause a trip right away, which is what you saw on the beginning of my runs. So that's what we're gunning for right now. As you can see, my Wild Morph successfully caused a trip, and now it has let, opened up a big opening on Nergigante himself. Now, most players would go for a huge Unga Bunga damage combo and get as much damage as they possibly can while the opportunity is presented to them, and possibly amp their sword in the process. However, I do something else and amp my sword just about halfway and opt to get a wound in on Nergigante's head, because that would, that's a better investment for long-term damage, because I will always have another opportunity to amp my sword later and get more damage in throughout the fight, whereas the wound is always going to be hard to come by, and lasts for 3 minutes. Note that this Power Axe Heavy Slam combo on was only the purpose to charge up my Power Axe mode, giving all of my Axe modes a, a higher flinch and part break modifier. This will help me break the parts off of Nergi's head and force trips on his arms. Note that that, that combo didn't really hit anywhere relevant, but again, the main purpose of that combo was to get Power Axe active. Now take note that there are black spikes growing on Nergigante's head right now, which means breaking those off would be a huge opener as it would cause a trip and allow me to finish amping my sword for a big combo. So that's what I'm going to try to gun for next. Take note that this triple, triple slap into get off is, very, is a very quick and easy way to trigger Agitator, which gives me an extra 28 raw and 20% affinity. As you see, I was correct in knowing that Heavy Slam would break off those spikes and cause a big opening. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to be in sword mode as it'll amp up the rest of my sword, get me more damage from my file ticks, and also being in sword mode gives you the most amount of damage. Since having a power file on my switch axe, it gives me a 17% raw damage increase. So being in sword mode as much as you can is the best way to play. So if you pay attention to what just happened there, using my ZSD on Nergigante's head, it eventually caused a counterattack animation because I hit him during one of his mini paw swipe attacks that he was doing. Now because I had Rock City on, I could have easily just tanked the hit and just kept on ZSDing. But for the purpose of, stay of this video and staying safe and optimal, I let go of my ZSD early as to not get hit by that one attack. 
releasing ZSD early will lose you more damage. However, you'll land with less ending lag and you'll be able to get to move, hop, or transform into your other mode with less end lag. I opted for less end lag and to switch into axe mode, which gives you more mobility and it allows me to reposition myself before Nergigante can actually swipe back as he is in a lot of end lag. That little poke combo of Rising Slash into Fade Slash was a good measure because I wanted to put myself away from Nergigante and create space so I can have time to prepare to position. It just so happens that that Fade Slash also triggered a counterattack and put me out of harm's way. This this is a Fade Slash and this is, and by doing this I covered most of Nergigante's options by putting myself out of harm's way completely. And now I have a perfect opportunity to aim for his arm to force another trip if I want to. That huge head bobby loud roar dive move allowed a big opening for me to start doing wild swings into a wild morph. Ultimately, I broke his arm spikes a little too early while I was in an unmovable state, but spikes grew on his head on the last hit of my wild morph, allowing me to force his clagger and take the opportunity to get a punish in. Note that I was almost about to run out of Rock City, so I opted to take to tank that hit um, to use up the rest of my Rock City and opt in favor of getting more damage in with my Switch Axe. However, like every action, there is a consequence, and I took about half of my HP and I got the Bleeding Status. Bleeding Status is no good when you like to use Peak Performance as one of your skills, giving you more raw when you're at four, full HP. I always recommend taking Great Sushi Fist Scales or Astera Jerky into Ruin or Nergigante fights to cure this bleeding immediately instead of having to stand still and crouch like an idiot for 5 seconds. Now you'll note I go through my item bar here and I'm actually frantically looking for Great Sushi Fist Scales and realizing that I have to deal with the bleeding for the rest of the fight because I am a dummy and forgot them. This is also where I opt to put on Evasion Mantle, however, if you're not comfortable using Evasion Mantle, I opt for Temporal Mantle, because Temporal Mantle and Rock City are, are the Switch Axe's best friends. You'll notice right here that Nergigante went for a big, big roar and is raising his one of his arms. Now this is on my right side, so that means he's going to dive towards the right. Had he raised this, this arm instead, and this one was lower, he would have dived to my left. Always keep track of these moves and where his arms are, and don't remember not to panic. During this roar, you're also able to proc the evasion mental and get into position for when he dives to the right. One thing to take note of is that because I did not have Amped Sword, I could not ZSD at the end of that, at the end of that clagger of the one, two, three sword combo. And where a lot of players would continue to amp their sword and get the few extra hits in, I opt to play safe and transform, do a morph back slash backwards to reposition once again to play as safe as possible. I advise you to play the same because axe mode gives you the most amount of mobility, whereas sword mode is very immobile and hard to, hard to roll and evade with. Again, Always think about your safety over over some little amount of damage now. It's not worth fainting against a monster. One thing to note as well. On this particular clagger, I went for a wound. So the first clagger, 
way back in the beginning, I went for a ZSD for damage because I had the opportunity to. On the one that I just spoke of, I opted to get a couple of hits with sword in and then get back, get out of there as, as to keep myself safe. Now this time I went for a wound. Now the last time I wounded Nergigante was around three minutes ago or two minutes ago. Now because wounds last for three minutes, I want to get, keep, I want to refresh that wound for another three minutes in case this fight goes a little, little bit sideways and goes on for longer than I want to. This is just a mental note in my head and I don't expect all players to to uh, keep this in their head at all times. If you're ever in doubt, just take every single Clagger and re-wound it just for safekeeping. But that is why I went for a wound on this particular hit instead of jumping off and going for some more sword hits. Note that I just got hit by two roars. Just this just goes to show that even with Evasion Mental and all the speedruns on my channel, everyone has a weakness. Every, no one, no, no Monster Hunter in this game is ever going to be a god. We're all the same. So just keep that in mind. You don't need to be a speedrunner to uh, to play a fight cleanly. I still make mistakes sometimes. Everyone does. Like I said before, on the on the second clagger that I ever did, I opted for a downwards axe, axe slash away from Nurki to keep myself safe. There's always going to be more opportunities to amp to amp your sword later, and this is now one of them paying off. I was able to keep myself safe. I never carded. I rewounded his head, and now I get to unload my damage with amp sword. Nurki Gante is a very fast monster, and it's hard to play sword mode against him all the time. You want to use these downs for sword modes and play an axe mode the rest of the time. Always prioritize your mobility and your safety against Nergigante. While I do make this fight look easy, Nergigante can easily take things out of control and turn it around. Displaying the mobility of of axe mode while having power axe and high part brick modifiers allows you to move in and out of combat while still sniping those head headshots in to break those parts. Again, now because I have amp sword, this opens up for a huge opportunity for more damage from sword mode. That particular sequence was a very risky one, and I do not advise any other player to do this unless you are on a speedrunner level like I am. Now, I hit his arm and went for an overhead slash in expectance to hit his head and force another trip. Un I got unlucky, and he went for a very quick, un usually unreactable attack, and I was not in the position to get out of the way. Un I'm lucky that my overhead slash actually hit his arm and forced a trick trip anyway. I do not advise just swinging Unga Bunga into Nergigante as you will get hit for it, especially with Switch Axe with high committal animations. I would have avoided just, I would have opted if I was a newer player to just swing once or twice and then get out of the way. And there you have it, Runer Nergigante is dead, and just under 5 minutes like I had said before. Once again, I'm going to reiterate, this does not mean you need to be a speedrunner to kill something very fast. You just need to know your weapon, know the monster matchup, and just play to have fun. Remember, this is a game, you can play whatever you'd like and how you'd like. You don't always have to be the most optimal, I'm just giving you an idea of how the Switch Axe at an optimal level should be played at the, most, at the safest way possible. Once again, I'm Skrillex, and thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you guys next time. Tune in for more weapon speedruns, and possibly some more weapon guides in the future, as well as an in-depth guide on the Switch Act later, if there's enough interest. I hope to see you all again soon. Bye-bye.